I'm creating an Arduino powered hexapod from scratch. And today I'll be showing you how I added an attack. You heard that correctly. I programmed an attack for my hexapod. I also updated the design of the tibia with parts 3D printed by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, but more on that later. But before any of that, I started with trying to add the ability to change the gait while the hexapod was walking. Currently, it had to completely stop before the gate could be changed. I made a change to the code and it should have worked, but of course it didn't. Every time I pressed the button to change gates, it would just freeze. It must have had something to do with the walking settings or maybe the data wasn't properly resetting after a gate change or, or something to do with the progress variable getting. No, the fix was to set previous gate equals current gate every loop, not just when the gate was changed. Obviously, I totally didn't spend two hours on this. And now I can seamlessly change the gates while the hexapod is walking. It feels way better to do this than to have to just completely stop. After I finished gate swapping, I started work on the attack. Originally, I was planning on making it stab with its two front legs while walking on its back four, but I quickly realized it would be insanely hard to balance. So I went with a slamming slash kind of attack instead. Something like the hexapod raising its front two legs, leaping with its back four legs, and then slamming its front two legs back down. So I started by just getting the back four legs in position to do the leap and the front two legs up and out. This worked kind of, but it was falling forward. To prevent this, the front legs needed to be on the ground as well. I added a cooldown to the attack, adjusted the leg positions a little bit, and made the front legs stay on the ground, and this was the result. I also linked the left slider to animation speed so I can test how it worked at different speeds. This worked exactly how I wanted it to. It was shifting its weight back while staying relatively stable. And I didn't even code in the leap forward at the end. It's just rapidly going back to its previous position in the walk cycle. With the back four legs balanced, I started working on the slam animation. My very first attempt was, well, yeah. It looked like at the end of the animation, it was freezing. And my first thought was it was trying to get to a position it couldn't reach. I was right, but it didn't make any sense since as far as I could tell, I wasn't giving it any points that were that far away. The actual numbers told a different story though. Of course, it was completely my fault again. I forgot how order of operations worked. The value I was trying to get needed to be from zero to one. So multiplying by three after dividing kind of screwed everything up. With that fixed, it was making it through the entire animation, which is awesome. Although it needed some work. I separated the slam into two curves, one for raising the legs and then another one for slamming them down. Here's what the slam down curve looked like. After messing with the values for a bit, this was the result. I know it's slow, but all I cared about was the actual path of the legs. Now that the path was correct, I removed the delays and improved the timing and this is what it looked like. Obviously this isn't the whole thing though. While this is happening, the other four legs need to make the hexapod rise and then fall. I made the back four legs push the hexapod up and this is what the very first test looked like. It honestly wasn't horrible. I just needed to fix the balance and adjust the timing, easy. Although after a bit more testing, I realized the legs weren't doing what I expected. I attached the hexapod to the stand, removed any of the coxa rotation and then tested it some more. You can clearly see that legs one and two weren't moving the same way as legs five and six, but they should have been a mirror of each other. And I'm sure it comes to no surprise that the issue was my fault. Basically, I had parentheses in the wrong place, causing the leg movement of only one side to be off by the amount it was supposed to be moving. And here's what it looks like after fixing it. And surprisingly, when I ran it off the stand, it didn't fall over. After a bunch of changes, such as fixing the back leg sliding, adjusting the timings, uh, making it lean back during the first part of the leap, and adding an upward movement to the legs after they land to try to soften the impact, this is what it looked like. I could have shown each individual change, but it was really just a bunch of small tweaks over a couple hours. And as you can see, it was now looking extremely good. The only thing left now was the recovery, since at this point it was just sliding back into place. I fixed the recovery, which just used the existing code that readjusts the legs. But while doing that, I may have ended up completely changing the slam, which was now a body slam, or more like a belly flop. All I had to do was change the slam curve to reach farther out and then make it stop before it went below the body. I fully admit the previous one looked way cooler, but slamming the legs into the ground like that would have been way too hard on the servos. 
I wasn't really happy with how it looked though. The outstretching of the front legs into basically just falling looked kind of lame. But I realized I could still slam the legs down. I just needed to stop them from going below the coxa. I changed the slam curve from the outstretch back to a slam while still making sure it didn't smash into the ground. And it looked so much better. The servos should be safe. The floor on the other hand is another story. I have yet to test it on anything but carpet and I'm kind of scared too, to be honest. I was actually gonna have a second attack in this video, but I decided to save it for another time. This video is long enough and we should probably give Pikachu a break. I also redesigned the motor mount, the tibia and the bearing shaft mount. The main change was to the motor mount. I added holes for airflow and I halved the amount of screw holes from eight to four. I admit I may have been a bit overzealous with the amount of screws I was using in the original design. I, I was just worried that if I didn't have four per side, it would create some sort of hinge and be able to rotate, but that was just wrong. After a couple of iterations, I landed on this design. It has as many airflow holes as possible and requires no supports, which is a really big deal to me. Now, I wasn't planning on redesigning the tibia and the other stuff, but because I reduced the amount of screw holes, I literally just had to. So since I had to reprint the tibia anyway, I made it look nicer. Specifically, I smoothed the curve out. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the edgy design, but the tibia was already kind of curved, so the redesign just leans even more into that. The screw hole change also meant I needed to redesign the bearing shaft mount. In addition to fixing the screw holes, I added some curve to it, and I also took a bit out of the center to make it a little less blocky. Normally, this is when I'd say, and after 12 plus hours of printing, I had the new parts. But this is where PCBWay comes in. PCBWay's main business is PCB fabrication and assembly. I know, shocking. But they also have a 3D printing service. I had them print me six tibias, six motor mounts, and six tibia supports from white PETG although they have a ton of other options. I'm definitely gonna try out the metal 3D printing in the future. I would have also had them print the bearing shaft mounts, but they weren't designed when I ordered, so. Now, I personally got these parts for free because, you know, sponsored video, but it would have cost me $98. Based on my research, this is quite competitive compared to other companies with 3D printing services. The parts arrived a week and a half later, and as you can see, they are practically identical to my test parts. I'm honestly really impressed with how they turned out. Now there was one issue with the parts, but don't worry, it was my fault. There was a decent amount of elephant's foot ting, you know, where the side of the part that's on the print bed expands. So I had to break out the X-Acto knife to get the parts to fit. I've been spoiled by the P1P printer by Bamboo Labs, which corrects for elephant's foot automatically in the slicer. But now I know that the STLs that I send PCB way to print have to have the elephant's foot compensation built in. That basically just means adding a bevel to the bottom of the part. Here is what one leg looks like finished. And here's what all the legs look like. Thanks again for PCB Way for sponsoring this video. If you made it this far in the video, hit that like button for me. It helps YouTube and me know if you actually liked the video and I'm pretty sure you did. The next video is gonna be on a change that I've been wanting to make for a while now the foot switch. I designed a 3D printed compliant spring mechanism that presses the switch in when the foot is on the ground. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.